Happy Thursday and happy Facebook Live time. <laughs> I'm uh, just a few seconds late because I was about to press the button and got a little, you know, thing in my throat. I'm coughing. I'm going, I better get some water nearby <laughs> in case this happens again while I'm talking um, since I talk a lot. <laughs> Well, hello, I'm Melissa Kerman of Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. Uh, welcome to my weekly Facebook Live. If you're joining me live, wonderful, that's awesome. If you're uh, watching on the replay um, on Facebook or on YouTube, yay, I'm so glad you made it. <laughs> Chime in and say hello. Hi, Teresa, hi, Kimmy. Um, I see people joining in. Um, always so good to uh, see people's names flashing across the screen and the numbers rise at the top of the screen as well. Um, so I'm not here all by my little lonesome. <laughs> Hi Robin, welcome. Hi Barbara. Yay, people joining. So um, today, uh, of course, I have announcements. The focus of the project is the Simple Sweet Stampers tutorial bundle. Hi Sharon. Hi Christy. Hi Amy. <laughs> Trying to catch people's names. I hope I don't miss people. Hi Laura Lee. <laughs> Yay. Um, so uh, anyway, some announcements and the project is a focus on the Country Club product suite, uh, which is in the, um, the mini catalog that's current right now. Hi Debbie, hi Sally. <laughs> I think I might have missed somebody. Oh well, I will catch you. I will catch you after. Um, I always want people to feel welcome. So um, anyway, so it's, it's, this is a suite that I very honestly, it's like, I first saw it and was like, who cares? <laughs> You know, laugh at me. Now, this was the challenge. It's always a challenge to create with things that you don't absolutely adore. But there are aspects of this suite that I do like. So I do have some of the products. I'll talk about that in just a bit. Um, and I do have three projects to share. They're sneak peeks of the Simple Sweet Stampers tutorial bundle for the month of May. Um, two cards and a 3D item. So I don't do a lot of 3D items, so it's always fun. This is a box um, designed by one of my design team members. So anyway, fun in store. Um, before we launch into the project, um, just a few reminders and announcements. Um, uh, let's see. So new catalog is coming, right? I ordered my catalogs on May 5th, the first date that I could order them. And I found out today that they're going to be arriving next Tuesday. I'm so excited. It's been killing me that I ha don't have the physical catalog in my hands. Um, usually I would have had it, you know, three weeks ago or more, um, if I had gone to on stage because the on stages were canceled, we weren't able to get those in our hot little hands. Um, so I'm just chomping at the bit to get it into my hands. I can't stand looking at the online catalog and not being able to leaf through the pages. So anyway, I'm very excited. Now, as soon as those catalogs come, I'm going to be preparing them to send out to my regular customers. My, um, you will automatically get one if you've spent $50 in merchandise or more in the last six months. Um, and you can request a catalog as well if you, um, oh my gosh, your catalog arrived today. Oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> but that means mine should be coming soon because you don't live too far from me. Yay. Now that's exciting. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm super excited. So when those catalog comes, catalogs come, I prepare some goodies to go in with them and I package them all up and I send them to my customers. Um, if you don't fall into the category of somebody who's spent uh, $50 or more in the last six months, you can request that a catalog sent to you. Um, if you of course intend to purchase through me, I'm happy to send you a catalog. Um, and let's see what else. So that's the new catalog. Super exciting. Now I placed my product order in the afternoon because it took me all day to figure it out till like three in the afternoon. And um, that hasn't even been shipped yet. That ha is in the picking phase still. So I have a feeling I'm gonna have to wait quite a bit longer for my products. If they are here by next Thursday, I will be sharing my box, my either unboxing or reveal or whatever. I'll be showing them all to you guys. And if not, it'll be the week after. So always fun to have new products. I just can't wait. Um, so let's see, what else do I need to share? So um, this time of year is a great time to buy the starter kit. If you join now, you actually can purchase pre-order products uh, in with your starter kit. So the starter kit's $99. It costs, you, you get $125 in product that you get to pick. Um, and now just a little bit of a, hmm, a little, um, what, what's the word? I don't know. Well, it's a tricky way to see what's in the pre-order if you're not a demonstrator. <laughs> If you're thinking about joining, and only if you're thinking about joining or want to check out the starter kit, you can go to my website, click the Join Now button, 
Um, you'll see all the details about how to join my team and at the bottom of the page there's a link to actually join and if you go in there and you start the process to join you can actually um, look at the items that you are that are available to pre-order so it's kind of like a way to see what's in the annual catalog or at least some of those things um, and entice you to become a demonstrator <laughs> Now, uh, if you join, you never have to host a workshop. There's never a requirement to do that. You never have to sell to anybody else if you don't want to. It's just a great way to get a discount and be part of an amazing community. So um, let me know if you have questions. I'm here to help if you do. Um, and there's lots of information on my website also. So let's see what else. Okay, and coming soon are my Taste of a Sweet product shares. If you're not familiar with what those are, I do them three times a year with the launch of each new catalog. Um, this year's catalog, the annual catalog that's going live on June 3rd, has 10 product suites in it. Now I focus on the product suites for my shares. So there'll actually be 10 shares plus an 11th, which will be the new in colors. Um, and uh, basically, you get a little bit of most or all of the consumables in a given product suite, so designer paper, ribbon, embellishments, um, whatever I can reasonably divide up and package um, <clears throat> in a product share. So I like to call it a paper crafter's buffet. <laughs> I like my little play on words there with all the food, food analogies. Um, so, uh, you know, you get a little bit of a lot of things rather than, you know, getting a lot of just a few things and you can spend the same amount of money or less. So, um, you know, to get a lot more variety in products. So definitely check out my product shares. They're going to be, I'll have information in my newsletter. There's also information on my website. There's actually a product shares tab on my site, which will give you the basic information about how it works. And you'll see photographs of samples of past product shares. And you can even look at the ones that uh, um, were available back um, with the, um, the mini catalog that went live in January, so if you want to see more particulars. So um, you can also let me know if you want to be on a notification list. You can either uh, leave a comment here in the Facebook page. As long as I have your email address, I can add you to that notification list. Um, or you can leave a comment on my blog and let me know that there. So um, I think they're the best things since sliced bread. Actually, better than sliced bread. <laughs> because sliced bread isn't really all that good. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, anyway, so um, thank you, Christy. I'm glad you like the name. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> so, um, okay, that's it pretty much for the announcements. I'm actually not going to showcase, well, this, this product suite, of course, is retiring, but I'm not going to show any other retiring stuff. I'm barely going to talk about anything retiring. You guys know stuff's going away. It's on sale, um, and I'm going to leave it at that. I don't even have project samples to show you like I did last week. I just wasn't that organized this week to get it together. So we're just going to focus on showing you the project. So, or projects, since there are three of them. So I'm going to face the camera down, and we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so I'm going to face you guys away. So I don't have to be on top of the camera. And then face you down at my workspace or my play space as the case may be alrighty so I'd love to know what you guys all think I know the new catalog is awesome Catherine I agree um, I'd like to know what you guys think of this country club suite now I don't have the stamp set all I bought from this suite is the designer paper and you can see I only have a little bit of it left I actually got one portion of the product share that I did with this suite, and which is how I have this leftover designer paper. Of course, it was uh, six by 12 pieces when I started, but I've been playing with it. Um, and then I also got the variety pack of these coordinating um, twines. So those are the two things I'm going to be using today from this suite, since I have none of the other things. So I had to get creative with my projects, even though I was... Um, uh, creating with this suite all I had was a limited number of things so the people who designed um, in the design team of course they had a lot of them had the stamp set they had more of the items in the suite so I had to really fudge a bit and make the projects my own which of course is always fun and I see um, uh, Teresa and Bridget are here yay so good to have you here welcome <laughs> So glad to see you here. So now this is the side of this designer paper, the Argyles, that I actually really love. The thing I don't really love about this paper is the, you know, it's all about golf, you know? Like, eh, I don't care about golf. <laughs> 
Very selfish of me, of course. But so these are the back sides of the golf ones. I actually like this pattern. I think this is really kind of pretty. But the other ones I don't really care too much about. But I do like the argyles and the um, these uh, plaids as well. So those are the ones that I'm going to be using on all the projects today. And for this first one... Um, it was designed by Sandra Hernandez. I've shared something of hers not too long ago. Um, I'm using the sentiment, Life is Better with a Friend Like You from Peaceful Moments. And then I'm using um, an image from the Rooted in Nature stamp set, both of which are continuing in the catalog um, going forward on June 3rd. I'm also going to be using, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the layering ovals um, dies, and then I'm also using this um, die uh, from the Ornate Layers dies set. And this is part of the Ornate Garden set, also something in the new annual catalog. Hi, Amy. So good to have you here. <laughs> yes, the paper does make a good masking card. I agree. Okay, and we, it's all about masculine today, so get ready. <laughs> so what I'm starting with here is I'm going to use my jet black stays on. When I'm using red rubber, I like to use stays on over memento. I find that it's a much darker, richer black. So I'm going to start by just inking up my image. <clears throat> Got this thing in my throat, man. <clears throat> Doesn't seem to want to go away. Bad timing. <laughs> okay. Got some other pieces over here I'm gonna eventually want to show you, so I'm gonna take them out of their little baggie. So, um, for this one, what I did was I just inked up this tree and stamped it three times. So, full ink. And then I don't like to overlap these too much because I find when I overlap this particular image, um, it just kind of gets too busy and confusing. So, I'm doing, making sure that they're really just next to each other and not too much in the way of overlapping. So there's my, there's my simple trees. Now I, I probably, you probably may have seen, this was the original design. So I'm gonna be doing something that's the same layout, but it's gonna look really different. This image right here is actually the back side of one of the designer papers. Um, I didn't have enough of it to find that particular image and I'm not sure I would have chosen to do it anyway because it's a golf lady. <laughs> I'm so biased, right? And then it also used this um, lovely Argyle embossing folder. Um, and I don't own that, but I do actually like it. Um, so it's going to have this layout, but it's going to look really different because I use different designer papers and obviously my trees instead of the lady. I'll always opt for nature over, I guess, human being images if I have a choice in stamping anyway. All right. So I've done some prep ahead of time just to make this quick and easy. So I've got three projects today. So I'm using one of these patterns with the, um, what is this called, plaid. I keep wanting to call it gingham. It's not gingham. That's a girl thing. I'm definitely not a golfer. Um, yeah, oh, well, interesting. Okay, well, you, but I, oh, interesting. Argyle and plaid are fashion statements in the golf world. I never would have known that, so now I've just learned something new. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. Okay, so this designer paper, actually one of my favorite patterns of the bunch. Um, this is the paper that has, you know, the little golf scene images on the back that you can color. And I did actually try to color one of them, but... I didn't have any blends alcohol markers that went with this color palette. And so it just didn't really work. And I tried to use watercolor, I'll show you. And it, it just doesn't work on regular paper. It's just not a good idea. All right, so this of course has adhesive on the back also. So I'm just gonna center that baby on there. Now this is, this panel is uh, four by five and a quarter. Uh, ish, give or take a little. And then this one is uh, five and a quarter long, so it goes the full length of the designer paper that's in behind it. Um, the black, the black piece, and the um, designer paper piece goes the full length too, so you can see it's all the same at the top. 
Okay, so now I did this focal piece in a couple different ways, and I basically have my sentiment at the bottom, which I've stamped and put adhesive on, and die cut the black base with that stitched edge from the, um, what was it called? The ornate, ornate layers dies. Getting all these names down is always a challenge. And then I toyed around with actually doing some different things with these elements here. And I'm just gonna show you an alternative. So on this one, I sponged it with, probably should have showed you before I did my attaching, but I sponged it with um, some Seaside Spray, one of the um, current in colors. And then I also took this same image. Now you guys can tell me what you think. I always like your opinion. And sponge the edges of that as well. So, we'll show you. Option number one, or I should say option number two, would be with the sponging around the edge. It has adhesive on the back, so I'm living dangerously putting it down. Just not gonna press. If you guys can get an idea. I'm gonna look for comments. And then this option number two, of course, is with the blue, the blue sponging. I'm not really sure how I feel about it just because the sponging is um, it's so crisp with those designer papers, with um, it not being sponged. That's kind of the direction I lean. Ah, uh, but Sharon loves the sponging. Oh, no, now I'm conflicted. Other people chime in. It softens it a lot. And so that is a nice aspect of it. But now I'm not sure. I'm waiting for comments. Ah, oh, she likes sponge too, Christy. Ah, oh, darn it. Now I'm going to just have to go with you guys' opinion. Because I think it's pretty good too. So there we go. I'm just going to rip this thing apart. And use the sponged one. We'll start with putting that down. I can't tell you how many sentiment pieces I tried on this because I couldn't find the right balance of, you know, the right sentiment that had the right weight and width. I tried one that was like a happy birthday that was inside the edges of this designer paper and it just looked too small relative to the oval at the top. Anyway, so finally settled on this stuff and then of course had to start playing with my sponging I'll toss that simple plain one and we'll go, we'll go with the sponging. Let's put adhesive on the back of that. I also played with the um, winter woods. Okay, somebody's saying without sponging. Oh, well, it's too late. <laughs> I'm already attaching it. Didn't really want to decide. I wanted you guys to help me decide. That's my little, that's the foil. I just, it's too hard to decide sometimes, so I'll let you guys do it. All right, so there we go. That's my finished project. And um, you'll see, you can just kind of see, you know, it's the same layout, but kind of had to go in a pretty different direction with all my coloring and stuff. So, ah, oh, geez, now I got three people saying no sponging. You know, I'm just like gonna go off camera and like change it up. <laughs> Who knows what will show up on the website. Maybe I'll take a picture of it like this and then I'll remove it and have the white and then we'll just ask like the entire online community of stampers what they think. Okay, I have to show you one more thing. <clears throat> so like I said, I was playing with the designer paper. I tried to color some of it to see what it would look like and you can see there it's like, it's so wrinkly and funky, right? Because this kind of paper doesn't really take water. But I tried and uh, use my aqua painter with some rinkers. And if I really wanted to like paste it down, it might've worked okay. But those are pretty delicate images. I don't know. Maybe that's another cool option. What do you guys think? You let me know about what you think about that too. I also tried using some garden green, which is the ink color, the color of that designer paper. But I kind of liked the black better. I don't know. So many good choices, right? Um, so yeah playing, right? Always trying to find just the right balance of everything. But there's project number one, all done. We're going to move on to the next one now.
going to let go of my indecision. Okay, so the next one is our 3D box. And this one was designed by Chris Cowan in the design group. She tends to do um, quite a, a bunch of different um, 3D sorts of things. Um, and sometimes they're a little, you know, more complicated, of course. But uh, 3D things are fun, and this one is not, not too complicated. So we're using the stitched nested labels dies on this one. And uh, you're going to see I've got some pieces and parts, like, started. So, and I ended up doing three different variations. So here's the bottom line. And again, I changed up the colors a little bit. But here's a 8.5 by 11 piece of... Um, uh, cardstock. So it's just a full sheet of cardstock. You would normally cut it right in half to get a, um, um, a basic uh, card base, at least here in the U.S. anyway. It's a little different internationally. And I'm just going to score at half inch, right? Well, it's actually upside down. That would be a half inch, two inches, and nine and a half. And this is sort of the body of the box, the long direction of the box. And then half inch, three inches, four and a half, and seven inches. So you got like a little picture there of how this is scored. Fast forward now to, now let's see, I'm gonna do a little bit of cutting. So I'm going to be cutting out a bunch of these um, pieces, but one of the things I want to show you in particular is, I'm going to face it the way that my box is actually facing. Um, when you do these cuts, you're not going to necessarily do a straight cut, and I don't know if you guys know this, but um, instead of doing a straight cut, you do a slight bit of an angle, and it will help the box come together a little bit better. I'm starting with that first cut, and then all of these cuts are going to be the same. So I'm going in at an angle, and I'm going to do these ones exactly the same way. And then when you fold it up, you've got a little bit of room in there so that it doesn't, um, the pieces don't like bump into each other and make the box kind of askew. So now we fast forward. <laughs> I can take this baby out of the way to my piece that's already cut and scored and even the edges folded and burnished. So I have cut out, you know, this whole segment here. And then I've, as you can see, if I hold it against the paper, you can see there's a little gap in all those spots. This is going to be the flap that makes the box close, the box um, folding element. And, um, and it is also notched a little bit um, so that it will fold into the opening best. So I've got adhesive on my little half inch edge and then adhesive on the back side in these spots here. So let's just go ahead and put this baby together. Now the easiest way to do this, you know, people might be inclined to kind of holding it in the air and getting it just right, but you, it's, there's a much easier way to do it. Some of you may know this. You're just going to pull off the backing and press it down. If your scoring is nice and square, look how easy that is, right? Super easy. You can see how this is coming together already. Now before I do the next thing, you can see I gave myself a little bit of a cheat because I want my designer paper on the side that has my closing flap of my box. So let's do that next. And my designer paper piece is sized to be, um, to fill up most of the space. There's just the tiniest little edge on this. So, and then I'm just gonna place it right down to fill that panel of my box. And it's just easier to do it before I make it into something that can't be flat, right? So adding that in there. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and remove the backings of these panels. So comment and let me know if you guys like 3D things. I don't often do uh, 3D things. I like to do fun fold cards, but don't often do boxes and, and such. Um, they are always fun and a little bit of a challenge, sort of a mechanical challenge, if you will. Um, but I always like to know what you guys like, what you want to see. Um, and it gives me ideas um, when I'm designing. Oh, I can focus on working on that. So-and-so said they wanted that. <laughs> and I love to please. So now this is a tricky part, right? Because this box is, uh, is pretty long. And I need to be able to uh, get one panel to stick to the other. And I, you really have to be able to press on it to make that happen. So I'm going to take a scissors on the inside. No, crazy. I might need something longer. My handy dandy 12 inch ruler. That'll do the trick. I'm sure you guys have some great idea, something I'm not thinking of here, but I'm just. Okay. All right, so there's that one side. Now, I also, because this is my front, I want to place this flap down last because I want it to be a really nice fold. I don't want to have the edge of the card showing up. So I'm going to start by putting that one, and then I'm going to press that one down. So the order, you know, can be important if you want to have the nice crisp look of a box that um, is well put together. So here now I've got my flaps and because they're notched out you can see I've got a little bit of extra gap right there at the front and because this is um, cut with a bit of an angle it's going to fit into that opening much better than if I hadn't done that. So you can see how how neat and beautiful that is. Yay! <laughs> Now, what to put in it. I haven't thought about that. I just, you know, I'm just doing the playing, creating the design. Okay, so now this is my sentiment. I've got it um, die cut with one of those nested, stitch nested dies. I've cut another one with a smaller one of those dies and attached it with some dimensionals. I've already done that ahead of time. And then I'm going to take two of my colors of this thread or twine, baker's twine. Incidentally, I was looking at the catalog the other day, the new catalog online, and there is no baker's twine of any sort. Somebody has seen it in there, please let me know, <laughs> because I didn't see any. So I'm thinking, do I buy baker's twine that's in the catalog now just because I like to use it, or do I just use something else because I don't want to use something that's not available to buy. Because <laughs> then, you know, it kind of frustrates people. So I'm putting a glue dot down here. I'll tell you what I'm doing right at the moment. And it's right in the center. And I'm folding my twine in half. And I'm just going to stick, attach my twine to that glue dot. I'm making sort of a little pattern with my baker's twine here. And this is actually... <clears throat> I don't know if this was the method that Chris used, but this was the end result, was having this sort of mimicked argyle shape pattern um, in behind the sentiment. So that's what's going to happen next. So I've got my glue dot holding it down theoretically. I'm going to put another glue dot on the top, help it to stay down. So this was just my little bit of... How do I make this work? Let's do it this way. So now I cut this twine just the tiniest bit too small. So now I'm having to really work at this to get it to tie. Tiny little tails. I try not to do that for customers so people don't have to struggle like I am obviously doing right here. 
So let's think of another, another solution. This is what we're gonna do. This is what you might wanna do. Instead of struggling with tying it, I'm just gonna put some, glue, some dimensionals down on top of those ends. That's all gonna get covered up, so why not? So I'm doing the same thing with this um, piece. And I can also, instead of putting the glue dot down on here, I can pick it up with the end of my folded twine and then I can place it down here. And then I can either have it on, I think I'll have it on the outside. So you see where I'm going with my pattern. And then I think I'm gonna go the easy route with this side doing my dimensionals instead of messing with uh, tying it. Just wanna make sure that I don't end up not being able to cover it all. Yeah, that looks good. I probably cut some of that off. Complicated behind there, isn't it? But guess what, it's gonna get covered up, so it's all good. And I think I'll put a couple dimensionals toward the outside corners of this one. Take off those backings. It'd be easier if I had something inside this box because I'm pressing on it and there's nothing to press against. So what do you guys think? What would I put in here? I'm thinking like long biscotti. <laughs> this is like the shape of biscotti. Packaged in a plastic wrap or something. Now, I really like this um, pattern of designer paper. I think it's very happy and festive. Um, Chris did hers on a base of crushed curry, which is the color that's in that uh, designer paper. I'll show you a picture if I can find where I put it of her finished project. So she used the sentiment from that set and some of those embellishments. Um, okay, where, what numbers? Okay, I, I missed the question I see Kathleen's asking. I, you know, <laughs> I'll either answer after the live or uh, you can ask it again, I'll try to pay attention. So, uh, oh, see chocolate, I see somebody saying chocolate, put chocolate in there, yeah, chocolate's good for everything. So anyway, I, I you know, I personally really like that. I put black on the sentiment so that I could tie the black in from the twine. There is a little bit of black in the, in the argyle as well. So there's my finished project. And I have another one that I finished, which actually coordinates with my third card, and which the contribution to the design, uh, to the tutorial, which is mine. So you'll see that in just a minute. But this is one of my favorite patterns. It's just so soft, the blues and the greens. Um, so, uh, so those are my two boxes all done. Yay. So let's go ahead and set up for the next one. And this one is also super easy. I've done my stamping for it ahead of time. And uh, I saw this layout on Pinterest or something. Completely different color scheme and stamps and all that. But I just love taking a layout and uh, recreating it with designer paper that I like. And it's... Uh, it's a really nice, simple card. So I've actually done one finished project, which I'll show you in a minute, and then this version here, which I'm gonna just quickly put together. Same designer paper pattern as the background on that other card. And then I've dry embossed this with my subtle embossing folder right there. If I had had, um, uh, the Argyle one, I that would have gone really well, but I didn't. Oh, I don't own it, so I can't. So I'm taking my um, this piece that's dry embossed, and I have a little a black layer for in behind it. I've got a lot of layering on this design. That is actually stamped um, with Memento because this is a photopolymer stamp. This um, this stamp set, and uh, I die cut it. I'm pretty sure that die is the uh, the rectangle stitched framelits. I have to double check. And then I have a backing for that. So I've got lots of layers on this card. So there are some of my pieces and parts. And um, 
This is the last element. So this one is going to be a banner. And what I'm going to do is it's um, sized so that it's going to sit at the top of this piece of cardstock when it gets attached. Um, but I'm going to create the banner with it in the position so that it's justified to the bottom so I can get the same shape banner and then I'll move it to the top and I'll have the edge on the bottom if that makes any sense and the easiest way to do a banner is to cut straight up the middle now if you have a um, the triple banner punch you can use that one but it does a really deep cut a deep banner if you will and I didn't want it to be that deep so I am cutting it a little bit more shallow than I um, and then if I were using the triple banner punch. So this is a great way to get a custom banner and you can do it with any any size um, or thickness of designer paper. So now that my banner is all set, I'm gonna just go ahead and attach it at the top. Let's see if I it's pretty pretty close. Yeah, cut up one side just the tiniest bit more than the other. So being how I am, I'm gonna see if I can do a little correction on that. This is dangerous, not only because I could cut my finger, because it's hard to get that so straight. Guess what? Enough, it's good enough. It's good enough. Okay, so I'm just gonna attach that in there. So I want to do a little um, <laughs> shout out to somebody who is often on these, but she recently sent me an email, and she's probably going to watch this after the fact, and she, uh, she sent me a beautiful card made with one of the project kits that I sent her for through the free card kit program, and I just love it, so it's probably going to show up on my website. I can find a good spot for it. Um, so she did a great job of that, but she also told me that she's not joining in for the lives because um, she has a new laptop and it doesn't, uh, the sound doesn't work very well when she's on it. So she's been, <laughs> this just cracked me up. It makes me kind of feel embarrassed. She's projecting me onto her TV screen and, you know, watching me like life size, which just, oh my gosh, this is like <laughs> kind of freaks me out to think about it. And then she sent me a picture of, you know, me on her TV screen. It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, I'm flattered, but um, it's a little bit kind of freaky to think I'm on somebody's TV screen. <laughs> really weird. But, you know, you do what you got to do and it works. So she can see and it's nice big. So when I demonstrate, she'll be able to see what I'm showing. So it's all good. I'll get over myself. All right, so now this one has dimensionals on the back side and it's just gonna get attached here. And then I've got one additional step on this. Now, talk about crisp. I just love that. You're gonna love the second one too. Um, so the last thing I'm doing is I'm gonna use some of my rhinestones And I'm using the smallest size, and I'm just going to color them with a Sharpie. Um, I don't actually have the black blends alcohol marker, although I'm sure you could do the same thing that I'm doing here with that. So I'm just coloring them to cover them all up. I'm going to be using five of them. And I'm sure you could probably guess where I'm going to put them because there's just a spot that needs a little something. So, take my paper piercing tool and start with my center one. And it's centered from side to side on the green piece here. And then I'm gonna do the 
outside ones. Trying to get it straight, even though I'm not right over the top. Always my challenge. And then I'm gonna put these other ones right in the center. It's a little easier to get them evenly spaced doing it in that order. And they got a little bit of shine, but they're black. So, you know, in keeping with the sort of masculine theme, doesn't have to turn into a girly thing even though there are little rhinestones in there. So there's my finished project, and I'm gonna show you the other one that I did that was done ahead of time. So this is the other version, the one that coordinates with the box. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, so there you go. And actually, geez, and I didn't even put that together. These two coordinate too. Don't you love that? That's gonna make a nice picture. <laughs> so speaking of, uh, I will be taking photographs of these finished projects and putting them on my website. So they'll be on my blog tomorrow. Um, my goal is always to get them up by 3 p.m. Uh, on Friday. And uh, so then you can see the finished projects and you know, and if you want to recreate them, you'll have the projects, the photos to go by. So I'm going to turn the camera around, say a quick uh, goodbye, and then uh, do some reminders, and we're, we'll be good to go. Sit you off on your Thursday evening. Okay, and I will, of course, be checking out the comments more thoroughly. Um, because I'm sure I missed some things. I saw things being talked about that I had no idea what was happening. <laughs> and uh, I am gonna finish up and go and relax. Uh, I've been watching this TV show with my, uh, my daughter and husband when he's inclined <laughs> in the evenings, you know, a little binge watching, uh, which has been really fun. Does anybody watch Station 19? <laughs> it's, uh, anyway, it's about fire, firefighters, so. Um, it's a, it's a, uh, what is it, a spinoff of Grey's Anatomy and they kind of dovetail. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to be doing my evening after I get off, just relaxing and chilling with my, with my sweet family. Um, so I guess, you know, what are the reminders? Um, don't forget about the starter kit. If you're not already a demonstrator, you are interested in joining or know somebody that wants to, um, check it out and stay tuned for more information about my taste of a sweet product shares those are coming really soon um and of course things are retiring so make sure to buy the things that are retiring that you really want get those discounts before they're gone and uh stamps are guaranteed through may 22nd and everything else is only while supplies last so um have fun shopping if you feel so inclined <laughs> And uh, I'll be back same time, same channel next Thursday. That'll be the 14th of April with more projects and fun and announcements. And uh, I will be sharing my spoils from the new catalog if they have arrived. So uh, stay tuned for that next week or the week after. So I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining me. And um, go have fun playing. Go craft or watch a TV show <laughs> or whatever you're so inclined to doing. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Bye. Or whatever time it is for you. <laughs> Day. <laughs> um, thanks so much for joining me. Bye, everybody.